Someone responded to my video on hurricanes, atolls and coral, very politely questioning whether total submergence beneath the waves is really not a major problem facing atolls. He cited a news report from Al Jazeera about a small group of islands at Kuna Yala, off the coast of Panama, which are indeed being swamped by rising sea levels. So I took a look. The Kuna tribe understand struggle. They survived pirates and Spanish conquistadors, a U.S. invasion and Panamanian politicians. Their latest battle, global warming. I'm always ready to accept that I got something wrong and correct it. But first, let's see what Al Jazeera is claiming. This area where I'm standing, and actually within a 30-meter radius, used to be completely above the water. Whoa, hold the tape. Now, when I saw this, I realized straight away that either we're dealing with faulty memories about where the sea level used to be, or this sea level rise is being caused by something other than global warming. If Monica Villamizar had been a science reporter, perhaps she would have questioned it too, because global warming has caused an average sea level rise of a few centimeters within living memory. Granted, it's uneven, and the Western Caribbean may be getting more than the average, but surely not enough to take the coastal water from ankle level to crotch level. So I looked for more information, and it turned out Reuters had done a story on Kuna Yala five months earlier, saying pretty much the same thing. That's probably where Al Jazeera got the inspiration to do its story. Except Reuters blamed a lot of the inundation on the damage to the coral reef, as well as global warming. Now, the destruction of coral would account for storm surges and coastal erosion, sure, but not permanent sea level rise to the extent the island is described to Al Jazeera. There was just one other possibility. The sea wasn't rising. The entire crust on which the island sat was sinking. The Caribbean is well known as an area of complex interacting tectonic blocks, so I checked to see if there are any tectonic plate movements that might be causing that part of Panama to subside and it couldn't be more obvious. The Cunayala Islands lie just south of a subduction zone, which means the crust they sit on is being dragged downwards as the Caribbean plate to the north subducts underneath. So then I went in search of papers that confirm subduction under the Cunayala region, and here it is. The results indicate such large variations in both direction and rate of secular movement as to rule out changes in volume of ocean water as being more than a subordinate factor. The only satisfactory explanation is that the land level beneath the tide gauges is rising in some places and sinking in others. Their latest battle, global warming. Now, I don't want to be too hard on the reporter because science is clearly not her beat. The fault really lies with Al Jazeera and all the other networks that assume reporting on a story on the environment means assigning your most poetic journalist to do a touchy-feely human interest piece instead of looking at it first and foremost as a science story. Before the conspiracy theorists start saying, ha, told you so, this works both ways. I still remember a Paul Harvey report from 20 years ago where he refused to accept the fact that sea levels were rising because, he said, the sea level is rising in the south of England but falling in the north of Scotland. So it must all be bunkum. And now, the rest of the story. It's not the sea rising and falling, but a case of the land rising and falling. It's known as glacial rebound. There was so much ice weighing down the north of Britain 20,000 years ago that when the ice melted, the crust began a process of what's called isostatic uplift. And it's still rising today, pushing down poor old England as it does so. Sounds a great cheering from the Scots. But when reporters fail to understand this and confuse tectonic subsidence with climate change, that just muddies the waters even further. Because when people like me point out that they're wrong, there's a danger that conspiracy theorists will seize on that as a claim that none of the science can be trusted. But remember, what you see in the media is not necessarily what's in the scientific literature. Most media reports I've seen do reflect the scientific literature quite well. The ones that fail are the ones that don't use scientific research as a source. So if you want to know if a media report can be trusted, listen out or read carefully to see where the information comes from. It has to be research published in a respected peer-reviewed journal. Not a quote from someone who doesn't do any research in that field. Not common sense or something that seems obvious to the reporter. Not a piece of information from the internet or a clever bloke down the pub that fits into an editorial position. Not the interpretation of an editor who failed high school science. Not by looking out of the window and assuming that daffodils in January must be the result of global warming.
In the next video, we'll see a classic example.